Hi all, let's have a look at the replayed game Lula against Hannibal. So there was a network issue I believe and they had to replay this game. Uh, so this is TSEC Season 13 Division 3. Lula playing white. The set opening position is from here. This is the end of the book. And we go into the Nimza engine. Lila plays knight c3, inviting Nimza engine. Knight f3, c5, g3. Knight c6, bishop g2. Hand will get a bit greedy with queen a5. Can this be punished? Usually players with black play like knight e4 here. For example, this continuation. Uh, and that looks as though it's hitting c4, but white can actually play knight c2. If knight takes c4 here, queen d4, hitting c4 and g7. This is actually very pleasant for white. So uh, after knight e5, knight c2, players with black usually, uh, let's put it on the board, uh, instead of knight takes c4, uh, they usually play bishop e7 here. And it's thought to be a small edge for white. So anyway, uh, we have actually queen a5, so is this too greedy? White castles, and black does go in for winning a pawn here. Okay, so Lila's not too panicky about the lost material here, but the rook is attacked. That's indirectly defended with bishop g5, offering another pawn. But also, any kingside uh, casting prospects seem to have a dampener now with bishop takes f6. Uh, so this looks a little bit dangerous for black here. Black plays c takes d4. There are a few choices as well. I mean, knight takes d4 as well. Maybe even knight e4. They're all interesting choices. But um, let's have a just look at knight takes d4 as an example. Rook c1, knight takes, queen d4. Here, bishop e3 seems to give white a lasting edge. Even though white's a pawn down, you can see that black's in a real bind here. So this should be about even at least. Uh, but maybe with the best prospects for white. So anyway, c takes d4 was played. And we have rook c1, queen b2, rook c2, queen b6, c5. So it looks as though that's locking down the d6 square. Now Lila takes on f6, which discourages future castling kingside, especially after queen c1. Because the queen's ready to pounce with queen h6 here. Black played queen a4. If castling, let's have a look at this pouncing of queen h6. First rook c4, though. Let's try and get the rook across to help the queen soon after queen h6. Queen e8, knight takes d4, clearing away for the rook to help the queen. This is very losing for black, basically, after knight b5, threatening all sorts like knight d6 from rook g4 check. Uh, this position, in fact, rook h4 here, because that g file of king h1, rook g1 is available. So this is mega dangerous, just g takes h4 here. And this is losing uh, for black, this position. For example, here loses the rook. If black doesn't do that, I can just take and take the rook. But if if black doesn't do that, then just king h1 and rook g1 is on the way. So that really is a smashing continuation, showing there is punishment available here if black castled. Uh, so here, yeah, black's already kind of on the run here there are some fascinating variations just just to go into that again though for a moment there's another line here uh which okay flat's really asking for it yeah knight takes is just mating and uh there's something else as well i wanted to show you about this in in this line with the more sensible knight g6 uh around about here instead of uh, queen f8 yeah let's let's just put this on the board this king h1 this this position let's just put it on the board queen takes f6 check rook g1 check and here bishop f5 is uh, a way of really crushing black uh, for example d6 we can take here and then rook g8 is threatened so after that, rook g8 is uh, really crushing. And here, if e takes this position, uh, queen d6 check, I believe, is, is good enough to win the queen. 
yeah so you you get the picture it's it's pretty crushing whatever happens so let's have a look let's go back queen a4 was played now rook c4 queen takes a2 so linda is offering pawns but really black's king is in big trouble knight takes d4 is played knight takes rook takes queen takes e2 so quite a lot of pawns invested so far Three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's three pawns down. What an exciting game. Rook e1. Queen b5. Queen c3. Now a5. Yeah, if black castled again. This is end of black off the check. Queen takes f6, mate. So black's really got precarious king. a5, bishop f1. This is interesting. Uh, now rook d6. So that queen has been pushed around. Now white at least regains one pawn. So uh, rook g8. If rook f8, there's a spectacular continuation with rook b6 supporting bishop b5. And for example, this position now threatens taking on e6. For example, uh, rook d1 first, though, looking at d7, rook d3. And now rook takes e6 is absolutely crushing after rook takes d7 mating. That just shows some of the dangers here in this position. So rook g8 seems needed. Rook d4, queen here, bishop b5. Queen g6 is played. If we look at this, again, with that pinned pawn, there's some devastating tactics like check here, check. And if here, then this is just mating. So very interesting position. Queen g6, for white that is. <laughs> queen f3. Uh, King f8 is played again to show the dangers here if a4 just as a token move. Taking on d7, taking on b7, temporary peace sack seems to work out quite well here in this position. So for example this c6, believe it or not, and white's getting a big advantage there. So very, very dangerous. King f8, h4, yeah not quickly going in to move the rook away from the possibility of rook f4. Yeah, h4 is, seems to be a very accurate move. Uh, if bishop takes, we see that the rook hasn't got rook f4, which means actually queen f5 is more effective without rook f4. And this position might be good for white anyway, though. It's that strong, the position anyway. But h4 is more precise, it seems. Queen g7. Uh, here, just to show that, if queen f5, we have rook f4 still, and then we can try and drag the queen away from f7 form pawn alert <laughs> and then that's just crashing absolutely murderous position for example like this is absolutely murderous so queen g7 is played we have rook ed1 queen g6 rook f4 rook g7 uh, now bishop takes d7 yeah white's getting the material back with interest it seems f5 is played which hits that bishop on d7 naturally uh, if bishop takes d7, rook takes f5, white well, can double the rooks and uh, crash through like this. This crash through example, check. Rook a8 uh, is devastating. Trying to nudge the queen away from g7, uh, for example, like this. This is just an example continuation. Uh, but basically, yeah, um, it seems taking is, is no good. So f5 was tried. Uh, c6 though, bishop takes, and white has now got this really dangerous pass pawn all of a sudden. And this is really great compensation for just being a pawn down at the moment. Not for too long now, it's equal on pawns finally. Uh, four pawns each. So big interest gains have been made there though. This big d pawn is just winning all of a sudden here. It's just nothing black can do about it. Rook takes, and now. Uh, rook d6 yeah black is helpless because of this d pawn rook g8 is played as an example uh, king e7 queen c6 here uh, nudge the rook back or at least there queen c5 now here there's actually uh, a key move coming up to try and really smash black is rook a6 so if rook takes if queen takes d7 then there's rook a7 but otherwise there's queen like d6 happening and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, this is just a hopeless line. So let's see what happened in the game. Rook g8. 
rook c6 queen e7 and now uh Lilla just plays d8 queening yep uh this is uh nice nicely winning if queen takes here rook c7 check seems uh devastating if the king moves then queen takes g8 uh, so what happened in the game was this and then rook c7 here winning the queen anyway so rook against queen uh but uh, it's absolutely winning for white king g2 f4 is the last move uh so yeah it was adjudicated as a win for Lila. uh it's with some sadness i'm doing this video actually <laughs> staying last night to see Lila really did make a good fight to try and promote to the very end but it seems to be the last flames of hope have been extinguished today before this video actually uh so i look forward to the next season if if games cannot be replayed i do feel that there's been a certain amount of unfairness to Lila throughout three quarters of this tournament because of the handicap issues the technical issues of the gpu uh, heat issue apparently explained the very fast movements in the openings because it was kind of overheating and later you can see that Lena had a win streak of something like five out and a half out of six so from drawing most of the games to sort of starting to win every game it's just there was an incredible transformation uh, I'll, I'll leave the details of that in the pinned comments I have taken notes of the details of that so check out the pinned comments and there's a poll link if you want to vote maybe it's our last chance to, learn to try and persuade the TSEC organizers to replay some of the NN games in particular the NN games where this issue which is not leader's fault but leader was a severe disadvantage for the a big part of this tournament basically it's a shame but otherwise we have to wait two to three months for the next season of TSEC so check out that poll link as well okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much